The presentation was called Audiology, to do with explaining the audiogram, a chart recording a child's hearing thresholds. Parents asked questions around that. I tried to help their understanding of what that graph means. The graph, along the top, big numbers, one, two, five to 8,000, and down the side, smaller numbers, zero to 120. Whether children have enough residual hearing, enough hearing sensitivity over a wide range of frequencies within which all of the sounds of speech fall. So when we speak, we not only drive the vocal cords into vibration to produce vowel sounds and resonances and so on, but we also interrupt that with bursts of noise, such as ch ch sh s and so on, within the words. And it helps children when they're learning to hear oral language to segment syllables and words to meaningful units so they can understand what's being said. And they have to hear those sounds in order to hear those words clearly and to learn them, hear others speaking them and to hear themselves speaking them. So in a hearing test, we're trying to find out where a child's hearing thresholds are and are they sufficiently low? Is the sensitivity enough for that child to hear other people speaking to them and their own voices without the need for any assistance? We're trying to measure the threshold for hearing and that's all that happens in a hearing test. And the threshold is the level where a child just hears a sound below which they can't hear it. So we're measuring your threshold for hearing, let's say it's there. So we come down, it gets quieter and quieter, you respond and then quieter still, there's no reaction. Back up again, yes, the response. That's a threshold for hearing. That's written on the graph with a circle or a cross at each test frequency, depending on what volume was needed for that responding to be present, below which there was no responding. Are those speech sounds arriving at that child's ears loud enough for them to hear all of that speech? Or do we need to amplify those sounds arriving at the ears through an amplifying device? And that's the decision we're making as audiologists when we're doing hearing testing. Our audiology is um, it's an allied health profession that is in c concerned with the identification, diagnosis and non-medical treatment of hearing loss. My specialist area is cochlear implants, so it was really the message about what a cochlear implant can provide for their child and the process involved in being referred, assessed and provided with an implant. So we'll start with some, some fairly basic things first. So a, what is a cochlear implant? It's a surgically implanted device, so it does involve surgery. Um, it provides auditory sensation, and effectively that's all it does. Um, and it, it provides that through electrical stimulation. So a hearing aid and normal hearing, the mechanism is acoustic, whereas with a cochlear implant, it's electrical. Um, we provide someone with a cochlear implant to give them a speech signal that allows them to develop or maintain spoken language. And, and so that, that uh, statement's highlighted in red because that's essentially um, the main point of this presentation. Giving you access to sound gives you access to music, to um, environmental sounds, and um, potentially uh, provides you some safety in a noisy or um, dangerous environment. But we don't look at those sorts of things. Those are um, other things that don't really feed into the assessment process when we look at offering someone a cochlear implant. Clinically, what, what, why would we offer or recommend an implant for someone versus um, suggesting to someone that hearing aids are still appropriate? So we, provide, we, we offer or provide or recommend cochlear implants for, for people whose hearing levels fall into the severe profound range.
below the severe profound range, hearing aids um, are um, well programmed and fitted hearing aids, may provide access to speech for spoken language development. Above a severe profound hearing loss and they tend to struggle. You can't get enough volume and the, the quality of the signal is distorted. Um, so at that point you start to look at a cochlear implant. So in the centre of the graph is what we call the speech banana and that's an indication of how loud spoken communication is at a distance of about a metre to a metre and a half. Um, um, it, it just shows the, um, the intensity of speech sounds. So if you're wanting to develop spoken language, um, your hearing levels have to be above the speech banana so that all these sounds become audible. And if your hearing levels are below the speech banana, and if you're going to access spoken language, then you need something in the way of a hearing aid or a cochlear implant. Um, so this is an example, um, this is a sample audiogram. Um, so again, the circles and the crosses indicate which ear, the circles of the right ear, the crosses of the left. Um, and again, there are, um, there are marks uh, by pitch and sound level. Um, so in this case, in the low frequencies, the hearing, hearing levels are in the moderate range, and in the, in the high frequencies, they're in the severe range. So as far as a hearing aid is concerned, or as far as that hearing loss is concerned, um, anything above the line is inaudible and anything below the line is audible to the person. So without a hearing aid, speech is inaudible at conversational levels at about a metre or a metre and a half. Um, Well-fitted hearing aids will um, raise those hearing levels to the point where speech sounds are audible. If that hearing loss is any worse than it is there, then you start to consider a cochlear implant because a hearing aid will struggle to provide enough gain. What I hope that people take away from the session is um, a little bit more awareness of cochlear implants. It's a specialist area and sometimes it's um, a little bit mysterious for people, so it's just demystifying things. If we give the time to families, especially when they're being told that their child is, has hearing loss, not to feel guilty if they're not doing everything perfectly all the time, uh, because there's general family life going on at the same time. So it's helping them feel that there are some things they can do and become more knowledgeable about over time, all in good time.